Hi everyone, welcome to episode 10 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at nested templates. Nested templates, or what you might also sometimes hear referred to as linked templates, is the ability to call one template from another. And you'll find as you start working with ARM templates more and more that this is a pretty powerful functionality that allows you to do a number of different things. And so understanding how to use nested templates is going to be pretty important for you to start building out your templates and make them more usable and make them more versatile. So why would you want to use nested templates? Nested templates bring a lot of functionality, but I've highlighted a few of them here on this slide. The first one, which is the most common use of nested templates, is around modularization and reuse. So far, when we've created templates, we've used a single template file and put everything into that file. That's fine if you're doing something simple and it's only you working on it. But as you start to build out templates, you may find that you need to actually break those templates up. And potentially you can create reusable modules of things that you want to actually pass to your team and have them use. So for example, if you have a standard way you deploy a SQL Server, let's say you deploy it with a specific configuration, you turn on threat detection, you create a storage account for storing that threat detection data, you enable encryption at rest, and so on. And that's what a standard SQL Server looks like for your organization. Then you could create an ARM template that just does that. And by using nested templates, you can then give that to the rest of the organization and say, this is how we deploy a SQL Server, please use this template and they can import that into their configuration and use that perhaps as part of a much larger deployment where the SQL Server is only one component. So by using nested templates, we can build modules and we can reuse code without having to just copy and paste things between our templates. This leads into the second point on here, which is similar, which is the separation of concerns. So often it's not going to be just you creating templates. You're gonna to want to have other members in your team or even other parts of your organization working on templates. And if you've all got to work in the same file, that can become very, very hard to do. So by splitting out your templates and using nested templates, you can allow people to work on the pieces they're working on and bring them all together when you need them. Nested templates also fulfill some... Nested templates are also a requirement for actually using some features of ARM. And so a key example we'll look at today is the ability to actually deploy to different subscriptions or resource groups in different parts of your template. So let's say 90% of your resources need to go in one resource group, but you've got another resource which actually needs to go somewhere else. Rather than having two completely separate templates, we can use nested templates to actually deploy that second part to a different resource group or even subscription as part of the same overall template. And then another piece of functionality that requires this is the use of multiple scopes in your deployment. Now we haven't discussed the different scopes yet, so we won't go into this too much. But we are going to have a look at that in the future to allow us to deploy resources that exist at scopes other than the resource group scope. And when we want to do that and perhaps combine different scopes, then we need to use nested templates for that. I'm sure there are many other reasons why you want to use nested templates, um, but those are a few of the most common reasons. And we'll have a look at some of those today. So let's have a look at how we use nested templates. When you create a template that's going to make use of nested templates, you're always going to have first a top level template where you call into the nested templates. And so that's what we're looking at here. A nested template is just another Azure resource. In this case, it has the resource type of Microsoft.resources forward slash deployments. But it acts just like any other resource you put in your template. It has properties and it has settings and so on. Now, there are actually two different ways to use a nested template. Firstly, you can have an inline template. So this is where you actually define the content of the nested template inside your top level template. And that's what we've got in this first example here. So you can see we've got the type set to Microsoft resources.deployments. We've given it a name, which will be the name of our deployment. And then we've got a properties section. And inside that is a template property. And so by using the template property, we can put in here the actual content of our nested template. So this is just a template inside a template. You can see it's got all the same properties, the schema, content version, parameters, resources, and so on. And then we're just defining our actual resource in here, which is the storage account inside of another template. Now, this isn't something that gets used very often because you're losing a lot of the benefits of nested templates. You can't do modularization and reuse and separation of concerns using this method because everything's still inside one template file. You're just putting a template within a template. 
There are some use cases for this, which we'll look at in a minute, mainly around utilising features of ARM that need this nesting, where you're not actually interested in the reuse part. So one of these might be the cross-subscription and cross-resource group deployments that I mentioned, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. However, the most common approach to doing nested templates is the second option here, which instead of using an inline template, actually has a link to another template which is located elsewhere. So you can see in the property section, instead of using that template property, we've got this template link property. And inside there, is a URI that we're passing in which points to our actual template. Now this is something important you need to know about nesting the templates is that when you run your deployment with a nested template, the nested template itself needs to be accessible to the ARM fabric that's running the deployment. So not from your machine where you're running the deployment, but actually from Azure when it runs the deployment itself. And so that means your nested templates need to be located somewhere that's accessible to that deployment. So somewhere like GitHub, as I'm using here, or a blob storage account, or some other accessible URL that you can put your, your, that you can put your templates in for ARM to use them. It is not enough just to have them on your machine when you run the deployment, because it won't be able to reach those. So myself, if I'm doing something that's not private, like the, the examples we're looking at here, I will put them on GitHub and reference the raw URL. That works perfectly fine. If there's some, some confidential information or some IP in here that I want to preserve, I will generally put them in an Azure storage account with a SAS token to access the storage account and include the SAS token as part of the URL in this template link. I'll do that securely I'm usually passing it in through Key Vault, which we're going to look at in a couple of weeks' time. That's how I deal with the, the more private templates. But it does need to be somewhere accessible. The rest of the section here is just passing in any parameters that, that template requires. So the nested template itself is not anything special. It's just another ARM template, and so it has a parameter section for it to receive parameters for it to run. And so this particular template has a storage account name parameter. And so I'm passing that in in my de nested deployment for it to use. So those are the two ways of actually running a nested template. Let's have a look now at one that's more realistic that you're something you might actually do. So here we've got two templates. We've got a top level one called load balancer and then we've got a nested template called IP address. So this is simulating a scenario where perhaps you're creating a reusable module for how your business creates public IP addresses. And so in my public IP address template, I'm going to declare my resources that define what deploying a public IP address looks like. And this is just a normal ARM template. I don't have to think about anything special with regards to the fact that it's going to be nested. It is just a normal template. I've got some parameters I'm passing in. This is just the one with a public IP address name. And then I've got my resources, which are just the public IP address using that parameter. At the end, we are defining some outputs. And I guess this is something you do have to think about a little bit because your parent template may wish to consume outputs from the nested template to actually do some things. So in this case, we're passing out of the output section the actual resource ID of the public IP address and the DNS name that we're giving to our public IP address. So those are an output to our template. In the top level template, We've again got this Microsoft resources forward slash deployments resource, and it's got a template link property, which is pointing to that template running on GitHub. In the parameters section, we're passing in the public IP address name, which in itself has been passed in as a parameter to this top level template. So you can pass parameters through like that. That's perfectly fine. So that will go and create that public IP address. But then we've, we're actually, after that, we're creating our load balancer and one thing we need to do is attach that public IP address to the load balancer. So in our front-end IP configuration, you can see we've got this public IP address section and in the ID, we're referencing that nested template by name. So if you look at the name of the, of the nested one, it's called linked template. We're using the reference function to grab that. And then we're looking at the outputs of that, we saw them before, and we're getting the resource ID value 
from those outputs. So the output we passed out from our public IP address, we're consuming in the top level template to use that as part of our load balancer. We can add dependencies, just like we would for anything else, so we're depending on that nested template. And everything else is pretty much normal. So we're going to go ahead and deploy that now. The deployment command from PowerShell is exactly the same. All we're doing is running the top level template. The deployment command doesn't know anything about the nested template. It doesn't have to. All it's going to do is run your top level template. And when it hits that nested resource, it's then going to call out to grab that resource. And again, just to reiterate, that's Azure going out and grabbing that, not your command running on your desktop machine. In the portal, if we actually go and look at the deployment history, now this is run, you will see that the actual deployment shows you the calling of the top level template and it's calling out itself to the nested template. And you can see the parameters that have been passed through and so on. In this second example we've got here, we are actually going to use the inline template option. And this is because the reason we are using this nested template is not because we want to modularize the component, but because we need to deploy this into a different resource group and potentially a different subscription. So this template is very simple. It deploys two storage accounts, one in one subscription and one in another. So at the bottom here, we've got a storage account that's just running in the normal way, and that will deploy into the resource group and subscription that we have set at the command line when we run our deployment command. But for the top part here, where we actually want to deploy to a different resource group and subscription, we're going to use that nested template. So again, microsoft.resources slash deployments type. But there are two extra properties we're adding here, resource group and subscription ID. These are optional, so if you don't specify them, it will deploy to the same resource group and subscription that you're using at the command line. But if you specify them, you can pass in a different resource group name or a subscription name. Now behind the scenes, what's happening when you kick off the nested template is it creates a second deployment that runs alongside your top level template. And so what it's doing here is it's passing in those two parameters to that second deployment to actually use and go off and look at this, this different resource group and different subscription. So we can utilize this to allow us to deploy into one resource group for this storage account and a different resource group for the other one. And because we're not fussed about modularization or anything, we're using the inline function so we don't have to worry about get, placing this template into a storage account or GitHub or so on. So it simplifies it. Again, even if you were not modularizing it, if you actually had a fairly complicated nested template, then I would probably look at putting that out into a separate file anyway, uh, because this inline syntax gets very complex very quickly. And that's how nested templates work. I would recommend you go out and try that to get a handle on how it's working and how you can utilize these. And then once you're familiar with that, if you look online, there are a lot of examples of how you can use this sort of nesting for creating reusable modules. People have created the sort of modules that you can use yourself. One word of warning I would give, however, is it's quite easy to go too far with nesting and make your templates very complicated because you can nest a template inside a nested template inside a nested template and so on so you can build many many layers of nesting if you want to whilst this might make your code more reusable it can make your code very difficult to use if you're trying to debug a template or somebody's trying to work out you know where did this value come from and you have to wade through multiple levels of nesting it can be very difficult so I would think about where you need to use nesting, try and make sure you don't use lots and lots of different levels of nesting, and keep it as simple as possible whilst getting the functionality you need. That's all for this week. Again, all the examples are on GitHub, so if you want to have a look and try them out, they're all there. Next week, we're going to have a look at using Key Vault as a means of passing secure parameters into our template. We covered this a little bit in one of the previous videos, but I've had a request to go and look into this into more detail. So we'll have a look at how you can set that up, all the prerequisites you need, and how you can start passing variables securely from Key Vault. So hopefully I'll see you then. Until then, have a great rest of your day.